but you still haven't gotten that replaced. At the conclusion of opening statements yesterday, the chair called up H.R. 2844. The bill was opened for amendment at any point. However, uh, without objection, I'd like to set aside consideration of H.R. 2844, the FCC Consolidated Reporting Act, and first consider H.R. 2810, the Medicare Patient Access and Quality Improvement Act. So without objection, uh, we will do that. And after we finish, H.R. Uh, 2810 uh, uh, will we'll return to H.R. 2844. So without objection, so ordered. Uh, the gentleman from Michigan uh, seeks to strike the last word. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I would. Well, yeah, I did. I did call up the uh, uh, the bill H.R. 2810. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for uh, all the work that this committee has done on the Medicare Patient Access and Quality Improvement Act. The sustainable growth rate has threatened access to care for Medicare patients for a decade, and I'm extremely encouraged by the bipartisan effort to permanently eliminate the formula and replace it with a new health care delivery and payment model that increases value and access for Medicare patients. Today, I, I, I introduced a piece of legislation that will work to expand access for Medicare patients to life-saving cancer treatment. My bill, the Medicare Patient Access to Cancer Treatment Act, addresses the troubling shift in the delivery of cancer care from the physician office setting to the hospital outpatient department uh, and as a result of flawed Medicare payment policies that reimburse hospitals at a higher rate than oncology clinics for the exact same service. Due to these changes in Medicare payment policies and the eroding re uh, revenues to community oncology clinics, physician practices are suffering from serious financial difficulties and struggling to keep their doors open. Reimbursement should be equal for the same service provided to a cancer patient regardless of whether the service is delivered in a hospital outpatient department or a physician's office. The Medicare Patient Access to Cancer Treatment Act would achieve just that by equalizing payments between these two settings for the oncology services provided. This legislation will ensure that cancer patients have the ability to choose which outpatient setting they prefer for their treatment, thereby expanding access and cementing the United States' role as the world leader in cancer care. I'd like to thank Representative Matsui for her support on this important piece of legislation, and I look forward to working with my colleagues to ensure the future of community cancer care. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I would yield back the balance of my time. Chairman yields back. Uh, so the chair does call up H.R. 2810 and would ask the clerk to report. H.R. 2810 to amend Title 18 of the Social Security Act to reform the sustainable growth rate and Medicare payment for physician services and for other purposes. And without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with. The bill will be open for amendment at any point, so ordered. Are there any amendments to the bill? The chair would recognize the gentleman from Texas. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, bipartisan. This is going to be a bipartisan amendment. So the, the chair would recognize the gentleman from Texas, Dr. Burgess. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is a bipartisan amendment that is at the desk, labeled Manager 03. The clerk will report the title of the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 2810, offered by Mr. Burgess of Texas and Mr. Pallone of New Jersey. And uh, without objection, the amendment is considered as read, and the gentleman from Texas, Dr. Burgess, is recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, similar to when we met in subcommittee, Ranking Member Pallone and I have submitted this amendment, which makes several technical aligning and conforming changes to the underlying introduced bill as passed by the subcommittee. In addition, it strikes and replaces language after further bipartisan discussion to improve, to, to further iterate policy intent, to tighten language, to reflect a clearer picture of a realistic timeline that has been envisioned by this bill. In addition, uh, the majority of these changes occur in the alternative payment method section and the amendment includes additional safeguards for taxpayers and additional safeguards for those proposing new models. This includes better aligning the interactions of various policy components as to how to best realistically pace things out 
as well as seeks to better organize the legislative language. We also, as we have from the start of this process, further incorporated feedback from stakeholders on ways to ensure that our legislative language met the declared policy goals and to generally improve the bill. Finally, we start the process of addressing a few related payment policies that we feel tie directly into the repeal of the sustainable growth rate formula and improving Medicare payment overall. These policies have met the threshold of consensus among the principals and we believe meet the mark of, worthy of being worthy of committee review of the policy and that we should continue to discuss the best legislative language to meet these goals. For example, the amendment adds a requirement that the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services report to Congress on the feasibility of and recommendations to implement clinical decision support mechanisms in the Medicare program. Overall, the intent of the amendment does not alter the fundamental outline, the fundamental intent, or the fundamental design of the underlying policy from the introduced bill. This amendment does not address every issue that has been brought to our attention, and I do commit to continuing to work on issues where I believe that consensus can be gained with more discussion to continue to refine this product as we move forward. Obviously, I encourage members on both sides of the dais to support this bipartisan amendment, and I'll be happy to yield the remainder of the time to Mr. Pallone unless he wishes to claim time on his own. Chairman yields uh, to Mr. Pallone, or do you want your own time? I guess I'll. I'll gentleman yields. Uh, yield gentleman from Texas him. yields back. The chair would recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Waxman, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I support the manager's amendment. Uh, it uh, it it uh, strengthens the bill, and I want to commend Dr. Burgess and Ranking Member Pallone for their work in assembling this bill and this amendment, and all the work they've done in the health area. And I especially want to sing the praises of Congressman Pallone because if I lived in New Jersey, not just because of this manager's amendment, but for many other reasons I would certainly support him for Senate. My hesitation would be I want him here as well. So like Ed Markey, you should be in both places at the same time. Unfortunately, Ed Markey is not in both places at the same time. <laughs> Uh, I support this amendment. I want to thank the, uh, the co-sponsors of this amendment, and I particularly want to thank all the staff and use this opportunity to express my gratitude to Tom Bradley and Lori Hausman from CBO, Ira Bernie from CMS for their assistance. This amendment and the underlying legislation would not be possible without the tireless efforts of Ed Grossman from the Legislative Council, uh, or who is Legislative Council, Jessica Shapiro and Jesse Cross, and I thank uh, all of them. The Democratic and Republican staff who worked nights and weekends, that's what they wrote for me to say, <laughs> that they worked nights and weekends to hammer out all of the details in this legislation, deserve praise as well. Uh, of course, Karen Nelson, our director of the health staff, Amy Hall, Eddie Garcia on our staff, Robert Horn, Katie Navaria from the majority staff, Tiffany, Garaccio and Alex Hurd from Mr. Pallone's staff, J.P. Palaskevich <laughs> from Dr. Burgess's staff, as well as the two Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's uh, fellows, Dr. Harry Hyman and Dr. Steve Ferrara, who certainly picked an interesting and opportune time for their fellowship on the Hill. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a uh, Good amendment and a good bill, and I urge my colleagues to support it, and I'd be happy to yield to Mr. Pallone and ask unanimous consent if he needs more time for him to say some things. Thank you, Mr. Waxman. Well, first of all, thank you for your comments. I really appreciate what you said. And I also want to uh, thank Dr. Burgess for his hard work and partnership in offering the manager's amendment, which reflects a number of important changes that improved the bill from the version we marked up in the subcommittee last week. Many of these changes are a result of feedback we received from stakeholders, but also from CBO and CMS, to ensure that the language was accomplishing what was the intended policy. And specifically, the manager's amendment extends the scope of eligibility for care coordination payments to nurse practitioners and physician assistants. It clarifies the parameters under which the relative value unit or RVU adjustments apply. It addresses and corrects the longstanding issue of misaligned Medicare 
physician payments in California, makes a number of changes to the alternate payment model APM section to ensure that models developed through this channel are accountable and meet stringent standards. It enhances the availability of data for physicians and other groups working to improve care delivery and requires a study on clinical decision support and also requires the Secretary to publish data related to the multiple procedure payment redu uh, reduction and a few other clarifying changes to reflect intent. I just want to note that a number of stakeholders may not see everything in the managed amendment that they wanted, and the staff on both sides of the aisle took everything we heard very seriously, and all policies were analyzed. But in the end, we had to make important decisions and calculations to get this bill to where it is today. In some instances, we were just unable under the time constraints to ensure that additional changes did not have unintended consequences, but we remain committed to continuing to hear issues and concerns and to find ways to make all groups comfortable. And I look forward to working with my colleagues to continue to improve this bill. I just want to thank the staff again on both sides of the aisle. I'm not going to mention names, as well as legislative counsel for all their hard work throughout the process. And again, as I said before in the subcommittee, uh, this is a bipartisan initiative. Um, I think that that makes it uh, particularly important, not only because it shows that we as a committee can work on this um, issue on a bipartisan way, but I think we can work on a lot of other issues in a bipartisan way. So I appreciate that, and I think it's uh, something the committee should be proud of. I yield back. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Pallone. I agree with everything you said. And to some of our friends who wanted changes in this legislation, I think with some of the changes in this manager's amendment, their concerns, I hope, will be less than th what they were before. And for others who uh, wish we could take up other issues that I that I strongly support, I hope we'll have other opportunities. We need to work not just on this, but many other changes in the Medicare, Medicaid, and health areas. Not just repealing them, but trying to make improvements. Yield back. Gentlemen, yield back. Uh, I'll, I'll strike the last word before I yield to Mr. McKinley. I, I, I too, want to thank, uh, again, uh, not only the members, uh, but the great staff who really, uh, who I know did work on weekends. Uh, I'm told that the, uh, the bridge traffic uh, to the beach was uh, pretty light the last uh, number of months. <laughs> because of their hard work, I, I want to thank particularly Karen's team and, and Clay's team on our side, but also John O'Shea, who's in the audience, who's no longer a staff member, but uh, really helped uh, build the bipartisan cooperation to get this thing done on time, as we said that, that we would. Uh, I also just want to call members' attention to a, a new item now in the, in the hallway, and that is you'll remember that when John Dingle was recognized, rightly so, for his longest service, uh, breaking the record in the House, Speaker Boehner announced then that we would name this room the John Dingle Room. And if you notice coming in either door in the hallway, those signs, uh, placards are now over the door. So let's. Uh, So we're Chairman, if you yield to me for just a second, it's just a great tribute uh, appropriately for Mr. Dingle, but everyone should note that this room is named after a former chair of this committee, but this building, the Rayburn building, was named after a former chair of this committee as well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. A Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got the Michigan-Texas connection uh, uh, now. So. Uh, I'd be glad to yield to the, my friend uh, from the great state I, of Michigan. I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and my colleagues on the committee for the very, very gracious reception of that announcement. And I want to thank you and my friend, Mr. Barton, for what you did here. It's a most flattering thing. It'll make me feel good every time I walk through that door. So. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, my colleagues. I am deeply grateful. I am proud of your friendship. I'm proud of the committee. As you've heard me say on many occasions, this is not just the oldest committee, which it is, but it's also the greatest committee in this Congress. And I think it has 
the finest members on both sides of the aisle, and I'm very proud of them all, and I'm proud of my friendship with them. And I'm particularly grateful to you, Mr. F Mr. Chairman, for your friendship over the years and for the fine job you do leading us. And I just want to say also to my old friend, Mr. Barton over there, uh, uh, your kindness and friendship is appreciated too. And to all of you, my friends, thank you. God bless you. Yield now to the gentleman from West Virginia to strike the last word. You turn on your mic. Just turn on your mic. You need. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for that recognition. Uh, I, I want to take this opportunity to thank the chairman and the ranking member Waxman for recognizing the importance of nursing practitioners by including them in Section 4 of this manager's amendment. As the husband of a critical care nurse, I know very well the significance of the services of our nurse practitioners that provide to our health care system. In West Virginia and across the country, we have many medical practices, clinics, and community health centers, which are staffed by nurse practitioners and have visiting physicians once or twice a week. They have a long history of being recognized as providers of complex chronic care management services. That's why it was essential to ensure that the nurse practitioners are covered in the definition of the applicable physician in Section 4 of the Manager's Amendment. So thank you. I'd also like to point out, however, that we need to recognize care coordinators and expertise offered by patients by cognitive care specialists. As our American population ages, we will see a dramatic increase in the bene Medicare beneficiaries who have multiple chronic conditions such as Alzheimer's and arthritis. It's important as we prepare for the future that we ensure the pay payment system recognizes and incentivizes face-to-face -face care and allows for any physician providing this kind of care to be eligible for the kind of bonuses that are right now only recognized primary care physicians. We need to make sure patients have access to adequate care, and we do, to do that, we need to make sure Medicare values those services. I look forward to continuing this discussion on this legislation, and, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman yields back. Other members wishing to speak on the amendment? Gentleman from Texas, Mr. Barton, is recognized for five minutes. Um, if you wanted to recognize the minority, Ms. Capps said, no. I would have. I didn't see any hands. The gentlelady from California is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Barton. Uh, I move to strike the last word, Mr. Chairman. I um, also wanted to express my support for the manager's amendment we're debating now and also for the underlying bill. Uh, throughout my years in Congress, it's been clear that the sustainable growth rate formula is flawed, harming access to care for Medicare beneficiaries and creating uh, uncertainty for providers. And for too long, while there was agreement something needed to be done, there was very little consensus on what. And this bill before us is truly notable in this way, and I'm pleased to follow Mr. McKinley's comments. Um, especially because his wife is a, a critical care nurse and I'm a nurse too. Uh, I don't think any member here can say it's exactly what they would have put forward, but I do think it is a product we can stand behind. Ending the SGR once and for all and moving towards a system where quality care is valued, the manager's amendment makes important tweaks that will enhance this goal. I'm particularly pleased to see two issues that I discussed in subcommittee markup included here. The amendment and this is where I follow Mr. McKinley's statements. Uh, the, the amendment acknowledges the critical role that non-physician providers can and should play as we move to more coordinated models of care. I hope we can continue this conversation to ensure that the list of uh, providers adequately reflects the real world application of the medical home model. And I'm also pleased to see that it, this uh, legislation addresses the unfair gypsy payment scheme. It's a huge step forward. Uh, for providers in my district who have been continuously underpaid for the work that they do. And I thank the leadership on this bill for addressing these issues. But I also want to express my support yet again for a clear pathway to deal with the extenders package that traditionally accompanied SGR delay and addresses ongoing issues in both Medicare and Medicaid policy like the therapy cap. And we now need to also take some action on this. Uh, finally, I'd like to reiterate my hope that the goodwill, which I was pleased to hear from Mr. Dingle, the room for whom the room is named, and cooperation we've seen since subcommittee markup and here today will continue going forward. This includes conversation on additional improvements to the language and perhaps most importantly, 
that we find an agreeable pay for that will keep this bipartisan, bipartisan product moving forward. I also hope the goodwill we have seen through this process will continue as we deal with other issues in this committee. When we do work together on both sides, uh, we get things done, and I think that's what this committee is known for, so I'm committed to doing just that. And I'll yield to someone else or yield back. I'll yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Chair would recognize the gentleman from Texas, uh, Mr. Barton, for five minutes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I rise in support of the manager's amendment. Uh, but I do want to sp speak briefly on, on two other issues. First, I want to compliment you and the speaker for uh, uh, naming this room after John Dingell. I've served on this committee since 1986, I believe, and for the first years I was on, Chairman Dingell was the chairman, uh, and then in 1996 we became the, the, uh, the majority, and, and Chairman Dingell became ranking member Dingell. Uh, and so at least for the last 27 years, at various times, I have walked out of the office telling my staff I was going to see Dingle, or going to ask Dingle, or going to, to beg Dingle or something. Now every time I walk out of the office to come to the committee, I'm just saying I'm going to Dingle. And uh, I can't think of a, a better member to name a full committee room after than John Dingell. Uh, he is the epitome of what a chairman of a committee should be, uh, and he also served with distinction as ranking member. So I, I do want to compliment you, Chairman Upton, for, for, uh, for requesting the speaker that we name the room after him. And on behalf of you and Mr. Waxman on this bill that we're about to pass, at least since 2002, when Chairman Dingle was, no, when Chairman Tozan was chairman, Chairman Tozan, Chairman Barton, Chairman Dingle, Chairman Waxman, and now you have all known, or we have all known that we need to fix the SGR. But this is the very first time, I think, that we've even had a full committee markup. Now, I could be wrong on that, but I, I think I'm right. And to have it not only come to a markup, but have it be a bipartisan markup where you are complimenting Mr. Waxman and Mr. Waxman is complimenting you and we're all complimenting the staff, that would have been unheard of. So that's, that's a real accomplishment. And, and you and Mr. Waxman are to be commended. Now, some have said that in a way we're putting the cart before the horse because we're reforming the SGR, but we don't have a pay for. And there's some merit to that. But for the first time, we actually have a cart. And it's a fairly sturdy cart. So this is a real accomplishment. And both you and Chairman Waxman, or Ranking Member Waxman, should be commended, and all the members that worked on it and all their staffs. This does show that the Congress, even in today's poisonous era, uh, can work together and do things that really will help the country. So with that, I support the manager's amendment. I compliment you and Mr. Waxman, and I yield back. Thank you. Thank you. Gentleman yields back. Other members wishing to speak on the amendment? General lady from North Carolina, Ms. Elmers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to thank you as well, um, you and the ranking member, for their efforts on repealing and replacing the sustainable growth rate. I especially appreciate the manager's amendment. Um, because of its specific inclusion of language to address the 25 percent multiple procedure payment reduction cut to the professional component of imaging services. I want to thank the chairman and the ranking member uh, for recognizing the need to provide greater transparency within the CMS with respect to this policy. And as a nurse, I would like to speak in favor of the change to Section 4. As my colleague from West Virginia, Mr. McKinley, just pointed out, so incredibly important to our nurse practitioners as providing the management and coordination of care for patients with multiple chronic diseases. It is critical that we include nurse practitioners in this section as they are managing and coordinating care for patients with multiple chronic diseases every single day. Nurse practitioners are recognized experts in the provision of care for their patients. Thank you to uh, Representative Burgess of Texas, um, Congressman Pallone, uh, Ranking Member Waxman, and again, Mr. Chairman, 
for your work, but also the invaluable service and work that the committee has done. And to my colleague from Michigan, Mr. Dingle, um, I grew up in Michigan. I was born there. I spent 31 years there. I heard the name of John Dingle every day. And it is just a tribute to him and the wonderful work that he has done. And now, every time I walk into this room, it will always be a reminder of Michigan for me. So I, I applaud this. And what a wonderful tribute to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back, or if anyone wants my time. If the gentlewoman would yield, I'd like to say thank you for those very gracious comments. And again, to all of my colleagues, thank you. And one thing to be said, as Mr. Barton made the wise observation, we've been struggling with this damnable issue for years. And finally, under your leadership, Mr. Chairman, and with the cooperation of your friends and colleagues on both sides, we have, by golly, gotten this thing moving forward. Congratulations to all, and thank you. I'd like to yield to my uh, uh, colleague, Mr. Long from Missouri. Thank you for yielding. And Chairman Dingell, I just have one question. If you could answer yes or no, I would appreciate it. <laughs> Do you approve of the naming of this room the John D. Dingell Room? Yes or no? <laughs> Thank you. I yield back. <laughs> Okay, is there uh, further discussion on the amendment offered by Dr. Burgess and Mr. Pallone? Seeing none, the vote occurs on the amendment. All those in favor will say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. You need a chair. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The amendment is adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? Seeing none, the vote occurs on the bill as amended. Now we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, all those in favor of the bill as amended will say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. A roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Hall. Aye. Mr. Hall votes aye. Mr. Barton. Aye. Mr. Barton votes aye. Mr. Whitfield. Aye. Mr. Whitfield votes aye. Mr. Shimkus. Aye. Mr. Shimkus votes aye. Mr. Pitts. Mr. Pitts votes aye. Mr. Walden. Aye. Mr. Walden votes aye. Mr. Terry. Aye. Mr. Terry votes aye. Mr. Rogers. Aye. Mr. Rogers votes aye. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy votes aye. Mr. Burgess. Mr. Burgess votes aye. Mrs. Blackburn. Mrs. Blackburn votes aye. Mr. Gingry. Mr. Gingry votes aye. Mr. Scalise. Mr. Latta. Mr. Latta votes aye. Mrs. McMorse Rogers. Mrs. McMorse Rogers votes aye. Mr. Harper. Mr. Harper votes aye. Mr. Lance. Mr. Lance votes aye. Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Guthrie. Mr. Guthrie votes aye. Mr. Olson. Mr. Olson votes aye. Mr. McKinley. Mr. McKinley votes aye. Mr. Gardner. Mr. Gardner votes aye. Mr. Pompeo. Mr. Pompeo votes aye. Mr. Kinzinger. Mr. Kinzinger votes aye. Mr. Griffith. Mr. Griffith votes aye. Mr. Bill Rockus. Mr. Bill Rockus votes aye. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Long. Mr. Long votes aye. Mrs. Elmers. Mrs. Elmers votes aye. Mr. Waxman. Mr. Waxman votes aye. Mr. Dingle. Mr. Dingle votes aye. Mr. Pallone. Mr. Pallone votes aye. Mr. Rush. Ms. Eshoo. Aye. Ms. Eshoo votes aye. Mr. Ingle. Mr. Ingle votes aye. Mr. Green. Aye. Mr. Green votes aye. Ms. Gett. Ms. Gett votes aye. Mrs. Caps. Mrs. Caps votes aye. Mr. Doyle. Mr. Doyle votes aye. Ms. Schakowsky. Ms. Schakowsky votes aye. Mr. Matheson. Mr. Matheson votes aye. Mr. Butterfield. Mr. Barrow. Mr. Barrow votes aye. Ms. Matsui. Ms. Matsui votes aye. Ms. Christensen. Ms. Christensen votes aye. Ms. Castor. Ms. Castor votes aye. Mr. Sarbanes. Mr. Sarbanes votes aye. Mr. McNerney. Mr. McNerney votes aye. Mr. Braley. Mr. Braley votes aye. Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch votes aye. Mr. Lujan. Mr. Lujan votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Mr. Tonko votes aye. Chairman Upton. Votes aye. Chairman Upton votes aye. Other members wishing to vote? Dr. Cassidy. Aye. Mr. Cassidy votes aye. Mr. Butterfield. Mr. Butterfield votes aye. Other members wishing to cast a vote? Seeing none, the uh, clerk will report the tally.
Mr. Chairman, on that vote, there were 51 ayes and zero nays. 51 ayes, uh, zero nays. Uh, the bill as amended is passed. The chair would now call up H.R. 2844 and ask the clerk to report. H.R. 2844 to amend the Communications Act of 1934 to consolidate the reporting obligations of the Federal Communications Commission in order to improve congressional oversight and reduce reporting burdens. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with. The bill will be open for amendment at any point. So ordered. Are there any bipartisan amendments to the bill? The uh, chair would recognize the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. Walden. I thank the chairman. The we have a bipartisan amendment, Mr. Chairman, at the desk. The uh, clerk will report the title of the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 2844, offered by Mr. Scalise, Mr. Walden, and Ms. Eshoo. The uh, amendment will be considered as, as read, and the gentleman from, from Oregon is recognized for five minutes. So we'll wait for, for the committee you to come see, to You can see, Mr. Order. Chairman, this, this amendment has cleared the Dingle House. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, gentleman is recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. This bipartisan amendment offered by myself and Ranking Member Eshoo and Mr. Scalise addresses two specific concerns that were expressed by the Federal Communications Commission. First, the amendment adds a new section, 14C, that would provide an additional three months for a new FCC chairman to complete the agenda portion of the report if he or she is appointed uh, near the end of the bill's two-year reporting cycle. Second, the amendment adds a new savings clause that makes clear that this bill does not impact the Commission's ability to issue other reports otherwise within its authority. I thank Mr. Scalise and the ranking member for working with me on this bipartisan amendment, and I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and to favorably report the bill. And with that, I yield back, or do you want me to yield to uh, the gentlelady from California? Be glad. Uh, Ms. Thank Eshe. you, um, uh, Mr. Walden. I want to thank you and uh, Mr. Scalise in offering this manager's amendment to H.R. 2844. Uh, I think the changes included in this amendment reflect uh, the feedback of uh, FCC staff, of testimony that we received, and it serves to strengthen the overall bill. And as the bill proceeds to the floor and in the Senate, I look forward to working uh, uh, in a continuing bipartisan collaboration in order to ensure that the FCC has the tools that it needs to protect the public interest and to promote competition across the communications marketplace. So I urge all of my colleagues to support HR 2844, and I uh, thank the gentleman for yielding to me. Unless anyone else seeks time, I would yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back his time. Are there other members wishing to speak on the amendment? Seeing none, the vote occurs on the amendment. Those in favor will say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The amendment is adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? Chair would recognize the gentlelady from California. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk that uh, I intend to offer, but I'm also going to uh, withdraw it. Uh, but I think it deserves the attention of, uh, of uh, the full committee. Clerk, uh, if I could just interject, will the clerk will report the title of the amendment? Amendment to H.R. 2844 offered by Ms. Eshoo of California. And the amendment will be considered as read, and the gentlelady is recognized for five minutes in support of Thank the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in 2005, under the leadership of uh, former FCC Chairman Michael Powell, the agency issued a proposed rulemaking tentatively concluding that wireless carriers, quote, must disclose the full rate, including any non-mandated line items and a reasonable estimate of government-mandated surcharges to the consumer at the point of sale, unquote. I've examined the website of the largest U.S. wireless and wireline companies, and I can say that it is, as a somewhat educated consumer, it's not easy to find these fees. Sometimes they're noted with an asterisk in small print. Other times, you have to click through multiple pages, and this is through very, very fine print of multiple pages. So the bottom line is that uh, these companies, uh, that they're not listed, uh, the, these, incre these uh, uh, fees are not listed in the advertised price of the monthly service. Now, when you're booking a hotel online, the quoted prior, uh, price prior to entering any personal information includes any applicable 
resort charges, fees, and taxes. Similarly, when you're booking a rental car, companies include airport access fees, transportation facility charges, and taxes as part of the quoted price. Why shouldn't consumers expect the same from their internet and phone provider? Two weeks ago, I sent letters uh, with uh, my colleagues, uh, Representatives Doyle, Lujan, and Matheson, to the nation's leading wireless and wireline providers regarding these below-the-line fees, which are added to consumer bills and generate hundreds of millions of dollars uh, for, um, <coughs> excuse me, for these U.S. Uh, communications companies. Each member, and I would ask that each member really do this because it's so instructive. Each member of this committee should take the time to examine their bills and go online. It's the best test regarding the veracity of this issue. As I've previously said, prior to signing up for service and with each subsequent bill, consumers should have certainty in what they pay each month. My amendment would ensure that when assessing the state of competition within a particular segment or sector of the communications uh, marketplace, the FCC consider the impact of these, uh, uh, what are called below the line fees. So Mr. Chairman, while I'm uh, withdrawing my amendment, as I said, uh, I'm asking you um, uh, to work with me uh, to determine the best way to improve transparency and disclosure for consumers upon receiving responses uh, to uh, my uh, recent uh, inquiry. Um, this is not a, uh, uh, a Democratic issue, a Republican issue. This is something that affects all of us, affects our families, it can accept, uh, uh, affects our constituents, it, can, it affects consumers across the country. Uh, so with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll withdraw the amendment uh, and ask um, with all sincerity that, uh, that, uh, that you work with me and certainly I, uh, uh, Chairman Walden uh, how best to address this in fairness to our, uh, uh, all of our constituents. Thank you and I yield back. General lady yields back and withdraws her amendment. Uh, are there further amendments to the bill? Well, Mr. Oh. Chairman, you didn't answer my oh. question, though. Well, you yielded back, so I just uh -huh. <laughs> we'll continue to work. I think uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Wall and I will continue. I know to that uh, if the gentle lady would, or I guess mm -hmm. I claim time. However, uh, I know the gentle lady has letters out to mm -hmm. the companies seeking mm -hmm. information. If they are not answers. responsive, mm -hmm. then uh, obviously we would encourage them to be responsive. Okay. And uh, you know these are issues we need to have a discussion on at, mm -hmm. at, a, at a later time, certainly, and will. Um, I, I'm sympathetic to this. I, I actually have uh, legislation to require the same thing on our health care premiums to figure out all the new fees and things the government's tacking on to what it's going to cost for consumers on health care and have a bill to require disclosure by the insurance companies to tell us what all this adds to the bottom line cost of bills. So um, these are issues we're, I'm happy to have a discussion about. I thank the chairman and the uh, spirit in which he offered to, uh, to work with us. Yield back. General Lady yields back. Are there further amendments to the bill? Seeing none, the uh, vote now occurs on the bill H.R. 2844 as amended. Now, all those in favor will say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. If you need to chair, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The bill is adopted. And without objection, the bill is authorized, uh, the staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes to both bills reported by the committee today so ordered and without objection the committee does stand adjourned.